Hi, I'm Dan Stein. I'm going to show you how to take an Enscape EXE and use it to do VR. In this demonstration, I'll be using the Meta Quest 2. The steps are virtually the same for the Quest 3. So once you've exported an Enscape model to an EXE file, you'll have a file that looks something like this on the screen here. This one happens to be 431 megabytes. Uh, depending on your antivirus software, you might have problems opening that file, but once you do, you can navigate around like this on the screen, just like you would normally do in Enscape. But now you're not connected to Revit or SketchUp or Rhino or, or whatever design platform you're using. Um, if you are having problems with the antivirus software, you can try what we do because we use the Microsoft Defender version of antivirus you can exclude a folder on your desktop and put all your Enscape EXEs in that folder. So anyways, once you have this Enscape EXE set up, you can open it. There's a tab on the left here where you can switch to device and enable VR. But before you do that, of course, you have to do a couple of steps to get the VR headset set up. So this is going to presuppose that you've set up the Quest 2 per the instructions that come with the software. But the first thing you need to do is open the Oculus software. So the MetaLink software. And then once you do that, you put on the headset. And within the headset, you might just see a prompt right away like I do. Enable Quest Link. If you don't, you can click on the clock in the lower left, and then that opens up a menu on the left. There's Wi-Fi, which you don't need Wi-Fi for what I'm about to show you. And then towards the right side of that screen, there's a, a Quest Link option where you open that. You'll pick the computer that it found that you're now connected to. You can see, if you're looking at the video, uh, there's a, a cable the Meta Quest Link cable that I purchased separately and have connected to the headset. So I'm going to click Enable on this prompt that just popped up. Enable Meta Quest Link. And then the entire environment that I'm in just changed. And there's this kind of curved toolbar around my waist and then a menu ahead of me. So at this point, you set the headset aside for a minute. And I should point out that that MetaQuest Link cable is a USB-C to USB-C. So it plugs into the headset, and then the other side plugs into your highest speed USB-C port on your PC. The next step for Enscape to work properly is to actually start up Steam. So just Steam itself. And then once you've started Steam, you want to install Steam VR within from the library or or from the store first. And then once you've installed it on different computers in the future, when you go to library, you'll see Steam show up so that you can just click install. And so in this case, I'm going to click launch. And then once Steam VR is fully set up, this is like a, a, a place where you can check and QA basically that, that the headset is properly connected to the computer in a way that Enscape will be happy. So now I'm in a yet a different environment. So I first started out in just the default Quest environment. And then once I enabled the Quest Link mode after connecting the cable, I switch to something that's essentially analogous to the Quest Rift mode, which is a computer-powered VR experience. And now that I've started Steam VR, now I'm in a Steam environment. And I can see on the screen recent apps, and there's the Steam icon. So now that I see this environment, I can expect to look on the computer here and see these icons lit up. So the VR headset and the controller both are lit up. I, I don't have the left controller in my hand, so it hasn't moved around. If I grab the left controller and, and move it around, 
Um, all, all the icons should eventually light up then. But now it's saying that the left mm -hmm. controller has an update. It just applied the update. Uh, but now you can see that all the icons are lit up. So if any of the icons are outlined like the left controller originally was, that means Steam VR is not actually seeing the device and there's something wrong. So there's no point trying to move forward and get Enscape to work. But now that we have the Oculus software set up or opened and we have the Quest Link enabled and then we've started Steam and then we've turned on Steam VR. It's a, it's a lot of steps, but once you've done it a couple times, it, you can get all this set up with a, a Enscape EXE in like 10 to 15 minutes. It's not really that difficult. And so now with uh, the headset on, I'm going to click to start Steam VR. Or I'm sorry, I'm going to click to. And now with the headset on, I'm going to click to start the Enscape VR mode. And right now, there's this, this kind of varies. Um, this doesn't seem to be the same all the time. I'm not quite sure um, what's going on because the sequence of events are always the same. But right now, I'm sort of in this world where it just there's just this loading screen. So I'm going to click the Oculus button on the controller, which is the little depressed button. And when I do that, the menu shows up. And down on the toolbar here, I can see one icon that has the Enscape logo on it. So on this curved toolbar, which is back essentially in the Rift mode. And that Enscape icon seems pretty tempting to click on. But right next to it is a Steam VR icon. And I want to actually click on that because Enscape needs to go through Steam to work. So Oculus establishes the connection to from the computer to the VR headset via the cable. And then Steam VR is the protocol that Enscape uses to actually send the VR experience to the headset. And so now I'm in here. So sometimes that, that last step I mentioned about having to click the Oculus button and and you'll see the Enscape icon and the Steam VR icon. Sometimes that doesn't show up and it just goes straight into VR, uh, what we're seeing here. So just for a second, I'm going to actually strap this on so I can use both controllers. And now that I'm in Enscape VR, I'll just show you um, a couple things you can do with the controllers in case you haven't actually used VR in Enscape before. So when you hold up your left hand, you see a little menu floating above your controller. And then you also see uh, a little cheat on what each icon does or what each control does on the controller. Um, but if you click on this little menu, you can open up this thing and, and uh, turn off outlines and, and change the time of day in real time, which is really cool. And of course, I'm recording the computer screen, not within the headset. So that means this, this is how other people can watch what you're doing without having to be in the headset, because only one person can be in VR in an Enscape model at a time. So notice that it says grab to turn and it's pointing at the, the trigger. So I can sort of reorient the model. Sometimes it's nice to do that to square up the actual predefined play area with like a workroom or a reception desk so a person can walk around. I'm just in stationary mode sitting in a chair right now, but um, you can set up a uh, room scale and walk around. You can also pre-save views. So I can jump to pre-saved locations like this without having to tell the client or, or without the design team person needing to like actually go up the stairs and down the hallway kind of thing. Um, and then there's the two joysticks that your thumbs can use. So the, the main way of navigating is just using your index finger on, on 
the right controller and pointing this light at the ground and then it puts you at the correct level for the headset relative to the ground. Again, I'm sitting in the chair so it knows that I'm kind of low and if I'm going to do this like at a reception desk, for example. I'll go over here to uh, the front desk, for example, and and now I kind of have a good sense of, you know, what the sight lines are for this location in the office. But the, the controllers, the little thumb controllers actually allow you to go vertical with the right controller, so up or down, and then the left controller goes backwards or forwards in, in the direction you're looking. So it's actually not something to show a, a new VR, a new person to VR. I wouldn't even show them these controls, just have them use the trigger to jump around or use the, the pre-saved um, favorited views in Enscape. The cool thing about the favorited views is they can also be, uh, you can also jump for the person on the computer screen. So if I go back to the computer screen, here's the Enscape view. And on the right are those same views. And so before you click on it, you would tell the person in VR, I'm about to jump you to the next spot. And then you click on this thing and in the headset it goes dark and then it comes back and you're in the new spot. So it's not like it flies you there and you're going to get motion sick. Uh, but mainly just pointing the light, the, sort of like this lightsaber thing at the ground where you want to go and click um, is how you get around. And then you want to make sure and emphasize to only point at the ground. If you point like far off, I just jumped myself way off into some weird spot. And now I have to... Um, you know, go back to a saved view or, or try and use the thumb controllers to get back to some, some normal spot. So when you're done doing VR, you can just take off the headset. There's never anything to save there. So that could just be hard powered off anytime that's needed. And then um, in Enscape, this is a pre-saved EXE file. So you could also just close this, but if you want, you can click the little toggle here to just turn off VR and then just start shutting everything down. Shut down Enscape, shut down Steam VR, shut down Steam, and then shut down the Oculus software. And that's it. I spent 13 minutes, you know, uh, an extended amount of time showing you how to set this up just because I'm describing it, but normally this would take like three minutes to get into VR with uh, the Enscape EXE file already been already having been created and a computer already having been configured to actually use the Quest 2 with the Oculus software and the Steam software setup. Thanks for watching.